Well, hello, Facebook family and LICMC. We're working on that right this second. And we are here back again with at the table of prayer. And I want to say hi to our team, Dr. Octavia and Pastor Darlene. How are you? We're well, blessed. Amen. 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 Bless. Yes. Bless, bless. And we have a great topic today. Before we get started, we're going to ask um, Dr. Octavia, would you give us a word of prayer? Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we praise you on today. Lord, we thank you for your presence with us even now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we th we're, we're waiting in expectation as you will open up your word before us on today. In the name of Jesus, God bless each and every one that is listening to us on today. And for our uh, Sister London and our Pastor Bell, in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for that. Thank for that beautiful prayer. We have we have a big topic today. I mean, it's almost got like three different parts to it. It's really one, <laughs> but it's really when I look at it, it's like you know it can go so many different ways. And the topic today is on the comeback, but I never left. Been holding on to God's unchanging hand, and what looks like a comeback, it's really it's another ne level in Jesus and life. And the scripture is Isaiah 40 and 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Now that is a beautiful topic. And I think it applies to what's going on in our lives today, right now. And I'm going to turn this right over right to Dr. Octavia so she can get us started. Praise the Lord. Praise God. We just thank God uh, for today. We thank God for this topic, which is really beautiful. Amen. Uh, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. And we know in this day and time, and has been, amen, in the past, the things that's going on. And, you know, we kind of lose maybe along the way. We get a little faith and... Uh, we don't have the get up and go that we used to have, amen. But all we have to do is really look to God, amen. Because he says, though we that wait upon him, the Lord yes. shall renew our strength. Yes. And also the Lord has promised us in his word, you know, that he will, uh, God, you know, I'm sorry, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. It's been confident. Oh, this that he who has begun a good work in us will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Amen. So we have the promises of God to stand on and to hold on. Amen. When we were going through uh, crisis and situations and, you know, everyday pressures in the name of Jesus. So I just like to say on... Uh, in Isaiah 40 and 31, that waiting upon the Lord is expecting his promises, strength to help us rise above life, distractions, and difficulties. And listening to God helps us to be prepared for when he speaks to us. Amen. And we have to be patient. When he uh, asks us to wait and trust in him, to fulfill the promises found in his words. Amen. Praise God. So, you know, it's, it's, he has already laid the plan out. All we have to do is wait and believe and trust in him. Amen. So, you know, and he, he did the big part of the job, and all we got to do is just, you know, come up and Lord speak, and he will. You know, <laughs> and I thought about that. That's, oh, that's, that's good. That's a good one. Yes. <laughs> you know, but you like to wait on on the Lord and then we know that uh, you know, some of even the the strongest that we can be or the, you know, we, we get we get uh lose power and strength it's just diminished. Amen. But God, he is never too tired or too busy to help and listen to us. All we have to do is to call on God. And, you know, I, I, I thank God for that because a lot of times when we're going through or we're, we're weary, you know, as we go along this way, you know, uh, we haven't really, really seen, I'm saying, you know, but seeing it, seeing it, but we really haven't seen we just got weary. 
And if we're le leaning on God, and you know, when we really realize He's holding us up as we continue along the way, you know. And so, you know, I'm thankful for God that for you know God that what He does for us every day. Amen. And what He's doing right now, what He's going to do. <laughs> Amen. But you know, I just thank God for for this uh, Isaiah 40 and 31, and uh, it says. Uh, I get, I had found it in the Amplified Bible, and I like what it reads in the Amplified Bible. For those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in Him, will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift up their wings and rise up close to God like eagles, raising towards the sun. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not grow faint or grow tired. Amen. Mm -hmm. I like it. the way the Amplified puts it. It's very simple. Amen. Amen. But, you know, we're going like, you know, in uh, the King James Version, and it says like that, uh, that when we renew our strength, that we should mount up with wings like eagles, mm -hmm. you know. And to run and not be weary and walk and not think. Okay. You know, the scripture is saying that, that we should mount up with wings of eagle as the Lord gives us the strength. You know, and we just, we can fill ourselves, we can lift it up in the spirit. I'm talking about in, in the spirit. Our spirit has been lifted up. Amen. Amen. You know, and I, I, I thank God for that because, you know, when we, we, we're waiting on the Lord, we're expecting his promises and strengthen us and rise us up and everything, you know, yeah. and then he, 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 he styles that as, as an eagle, you know. And I, I this where we used to live, we had, it was a, oh, I don't know, about a half a mile from our house. It was a eagle's nest, which was really unique. And you could see the eagle when he left early in the morning and the eagle would come back. And I was told that that was the father eagle that we would see and we would go out every day and try to see him you know doing whatever whatever they do amen so and, and there were people were telling me said well that's the father eagle he goes away and he gets provisions for his young that's in the nest mm -hmm. amen so you know i'm saying okay that that's really unique mm -hmm. that's really you know so we have to Put, you know, I trust in him because we know that he's right here. Yeah. And we just, we just, you know, thank God for that. But, you know, okay, now, the benefits of waiting on God. Waiting on God helps us to focus on the purpose and direction for our life according to God's will. That's very important. Mm -hmm. But God, you know, he'll call us to do this, that, and whatever. And we say, okay, yes, Lord. And then we say, okay, now, how? how I don't know all about it. I don't know what's going on here, Lord. You know what I do. But waiting on God helps us. It's important that we that we take time to be still before God, getting in a, a close relationship with Him, so we can com confidentially know and follow His will in our daily life. So that's yes. very important. Mm -hmm. If God calls us to do something tells us to do something, we, we have, we just say, okay, Lord, like somebody tells you, tell, I tell my kids, go store, you know, get me a loaf of bread, some milk, you know, whatever, whatever, and all they heard was loaf of bread, they come back <laughs> with the rest of my food, you know? <laughs> we just don't want to, but when he says, okay, uh, I tell you, I want you to go on your food, just that, but yes, Lord, and I take off, but I hadn't waited for him to finish. Or tell me what else, you know. So this is just waiting, the, you know, waiting on the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you know, and He will direct our path. Yes. We don't have to go out blindly and do what we think we should do or what have you. You know, and, mm -hmm. and the, also the scripture uh, says, run and not grow weary. That means feeling exhausted, not sure whether to, to stand, walk, or run. Mm -hmm. Cramped schedule, <laughs> never ending responsibility, and attempting to multitask it all in an effort to be more efficient. Doesn't that sound like a 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, in the process, in and up, emotionally and physically fatigued. Oh, I'm tired of that. I did all that. <laughs> and all we had to do was just, you know, wait on the Lord. <laughs> then he can, you know, tell us what to do. Then we can get up and run. And don't be, you know, don't be tired. Because we know we done got our minds in order to tell you, you know, what to do and how to do it and when to do it and whatever, you know. and we haven't seen a book of sweat yet. So, wow. <laughs> that is a good God. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, but really, another thing is that waiting on God protects us from danger. You know, and, uh, and we're waiting on God and we're, and we're waiting for Him to answer prayer, allow us to know more about the character of God. Amen. Yes. Yeah. If we really look at, we know more about his character. Yeah. And waiting allow God to show us who we are and what we are capable of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So he don't leave, he don't leave us swinging in the wind, in, in the wind <laughs> you know. And if we, li- if we listen and wait, he will let us know what's going on, you know. Right. So, you know, I, I, I thank God, you know, for, for all of that. And I just one more scripture, and then I will give it to uh, Pastor Bell. <laughs> Jeremiah 17, uh, uh, verse 7 through and 8. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots, by the stream, it does not fear when the heat comes. It leaves are, are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought, and never fails to bear fruit. Amen. And you've been nourishing for the stream. We are the vine, and the vine has been nourishment, and the nourishing is God. Amen. Okay. Okay, and then, you know, the breakthrough comes when we understand and realize that we're not waiting on people for our miracle. We are waiting on God. Mm -hmm. Amen. The miracle himself. In Jesus' name. Lord, I I thank God. That encouraged me. (laughs) Thank God for Pastor Bell. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Sound like Dr. Bell, Pastor Bell. Yes. You're going to say the prayers to me now. <laughs> Ooh, I tell you, the bake has the cake. Uh, Dr. Tavia, you, you baked several layers on this uh, wonderful afternoon. Hey, man. Well, I knew you could just take care of all of that, you know, icing and all that good stuff. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I think you put one layer of icing on there, too. Uh, I was sitting here just, I was taking notes, I said, oh my gosh, so good, so, but as always, you know, that waiting of God, trusting him, and uh, London, I love this uh, topic today, Man, you have been on the comeback, <laughs> but I've never left, being holding on to God's unchanging hand, and what looks like a comeback is another level in Jesus. And life. And Dr. Octavia, you didn't leave any stones on turn, young lady, woman of God. <laughs> and, uh, I like, uh, she came out the gate. She says, promises to stand on, the promise of God are for us to stand on and to hold on. We, right. You know what? That is the, the whole truth of the whole matter. We have to hold on to God's promises. We have to, if he said it, we have to believe, and she said, waiting on God cause us to rise above all life difficulties. Yes. So it protects yes. us from dangers, and I mean, you you just uh, build it out today, <laughs> as always. <laughs> well, listen, I'm just going to take the baton and run a little bit. Child, you, are, you, know, you know how they have, when you have those races, they have the little ribbon, and you run through the ribbon. <laughs> Child, you know, I took the baton and ran through the, the river. <laughs> so I'm just taking the time and maybe run a tiny little bit. But anyway, just to pick up where you left off that, just as always, 
London is a good topic that, you know, I, you feel like, okay, well, I'm making a comeback, but I never left. Because it all it is all entwined in, we have to trust God. See, there's yeah. no middle ground. Either you look, as a saint of God, either you're going to trust God, or you're not going to trust God. You know, that's why in Revelation it says, you're either hot or cold, but because you're warm, I'm going to spew you out. We have to realize that even with God's kingdom and the light, there's no middle ground. At the end of all of this, there's no ending for us because we have eternal life within us. But everybody's going to spend the two choices, heaven or hell. Mm -hmm. And now while we're on this life, this regular life, uh, you know, pursuing and, and going to our eternal life, then we have to trust God through this, this journey. Mm -hmm. And um, I like what Dr. Octavia once again, she said that, uh, when you wait on God and you trust his promises, it'll make you rise above life's difficulty. Jesus said, in the world, you will have tribulation. But he said, be of the cheer. I've overcome the world. And then he said, the peace I leave to you, not as the world giveth, but give I you. So I have another few more scriptures. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know this is the anthem of the Christians. It says, well, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts Amen. of peace. And we think about peace in, in our life. It's tranquility of heart. It's free from disturbance. It's calmness. It's free from stress. And not to say stress will not ever come knocking at your door. What do you do when stress comes? Are you going to invite stress in and then de de decree and declare, well, I'm just having a stressful day to day, you know, I'm just all worn out by my life service. No, you, God has given us authority, amen? So he's amen. Is for peace. So when stress comes knocking, you don't just open the door, who is it? Oh, it's stress, you want me? Yeah, I'll put you out. No. <laughs> no, but you're a liar, get out of here. You know, you come knocking at the door with all type of ailments. Who is it? Oh, it's just, uh, a miserable spirit, a spirit of infirmity, you want me? No. I buy you, you gotta fight back. Mm -hmm. Amen. But Jeremiah 29 left. I know the thoughts I have for you. What are the thoughts and plans of peace? And then verse 12, I love this part of Jeremiah 29. 12 says, Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me. So, you know, um, we have it's a praying journey mm -hmm. you have to include god in everything that you do and truly make him the lord and the director of your life he, the word says you shall pray unto me and i will hearken unto you it didn't say well you gonna pray and i'm ignoring you the more you pray i'm gonna just walk away no i'll hearken because god loves us so much it's, and then verse 13 of jeremiah 29 says and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. And so that's why, you know, in the book of James, it says, when we draw nigh to God, he draws nigh to us. God is a very respectful gentleman. He knows he created us to be free will creatures. He's not going to force himself upon us. We are in Jesus because we have invited him to come into our lives. We are yielding our will and ourselves to the Lord. So he said, well, you, you'll find me when you search for me with all your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, we put a little pause button there because I'm thinking about um, Hebrew 11 and 6. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. But they that come to the Lord must know, believe he mm -hmm. is God. And he's a he is a rewarder of those who what diligently seek him. So yeah. sometimes, you know, things come in our lives. It really, instead of driving us away from God as a child of God, it drives us to God. And mm -hmm. that's good because, like in that in our topic today, I, I never left God. And when challenges come, as a true child of God, we're not going to run away. And see, some people make that mistake. You know, they're not rooted and grounded. As soon as a little challenge 
then they'll run from God than, you know, saying, oh, well, I just knew it wasn't nothing to this. But it is something to this. Yeah. All things to this to God. Now, 29 and 14, it says, now, back to the 13, you search me with your whole heart, you're going to be found in me. Uh, well, you'll find me when you search me with your whole heart. Verse 14 of Jeremiah 29 says, and I will be found of you, said the Lord. And I like this part here. I will turn away your captivity. Yeah. So you Amen. have to remember whatever anybody is going through, it doesn't mean that that's a final destination. God is able to turn yeah. it around. And, and I'll tell you, you'll be stronger. Your muscles will be we're talking about spiritual muscles will be stronger, more built. You'll have more knowledge, mm -hmm. you know. And, and God mm -hmm. always is there with us. He said, I'll turn your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where, where whether I have driven you, saith the Lord, I will bring you again into the place where I caused you to be carried away. Captain, that's kind of deep right there. Amen. So, mm -hmm. Nothing taking God, God is never blindsided. Amen. It's not like, oh my God, what happened here? No. <laughs> no, God knows everything that's happening in our lives that has happened and that will yet to happen. He is in control because we have given him lordship over our lives. Proverbs 3 and 5 said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. Verse 6 really brings it home. In all thy ways. Well, I don't have to pray about this. Uh, yeah. I've even gotten into discussions with people. I ain't got to pray about this. I said, you know what? Maybe you don't, but I do. I pray about everything because the Bible said, all your ways, acknowledge him. And then what will happen? He shall direct your pain. Amen. Amen. Verse 7 says, be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, or that means respect Him, and depart from evil. So we have a part two to play. Even though we know we have grace, we know we have God, you know, yeah. unearned blessings and, and favor and all that good stuff. We still have to live a balanced life. We know we're forgiven, but that doesn't mean, oh, I got a sin charge card. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm just going to go to the to free. No. <laughs> And God gonna forgive me, child. Mm, mm, no, mm. no, no. God will teach all of us how to live a balance and a good life. Amen. Now we're still in Proverbs. I read three. I read Proverbs chapter three. I read five and six and seven. But I want to really look at verse eight. When you acknowledge the Lord in all your ways, you know, and you lean not to your own understanding. You know, verse 7 says, don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, respect him, and depart from evil. Verse 8 says, now when you do that, when you really, really, really trust in God's word and, and eat on God's word, you, and when we say eat, that means you're not going to take your Bible and tear the pages out, paper, and then <laughs> your mouth. Well, you told me to eat, I can't wait to stop. No, no, no. <laughs> eat means read. <laughs> you read the word. You, you think about it. What does this mean? How can this apply to me? And you allow the word to become a part of your life and really direct your life. And once you do that, you really get full of the word. Verse 8 says, it shall be health to thy navel. See, now the word is spiritual, but now this is kind of deep. Once you adjust that word, you know, it, it, it blesses every area of your life of our life it said it shall be helped to thy navel and morrow to thy bone you know i said well I, I, I was i read that and i said lord um i need to understand that a little bit more morrow i said well you know what is morrow so i, I did a little research and it said the healthy bone marrow releases blood cells into our bloodstream. That's always something very important to me. Mm -hmm. When they are mature and uh, when required. It says, without bone marrow. Now look, the word, oh, thank you, G. The word, the word just permeates every part of us. It permeates us spiritually, but it blesses us physically. It says, without bone marrow, our bodies could not produce. 
the white cells we need to fight infection and child with this global pandemic that's been going on since what 2019 the lord has kept it lord thank you thank you thank you thank you i take a little quick praise but thank you jesus thank mm-hmm, you jesus. Mm-hmm. Uh, the main thing was fighting off infections and keeping uh, whatever that thing is away from us. And that's what happens with a good, healthy uh, moral. It, it produces the white cells we need to fight infection and the red blood cells we need to carry oxygen. Now, you know we can't make it without oxygen. And the platelets, we need to stop breathing. That was from Better Health. Uh, dot six dot gov. <laughs> so I'm just saying the, the word of God says when you include God in your life, it's going to be health to your navel and marrow to your bones. Glory to God. So this walking with God, of course, it blesses you spiritually, but guess what? When you fully in the Lord, your mind will be healed and strong. Because the word of God said he's not giving us the spirit of fear, but power of love and a strong mind. God will heal our bodies. Isaiah 58 and 5 says he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace with partner. With his stripes, we are healed. And then um, Psalm 103 says, bless the Lord. Start with the first verse. Oh, my soul, all that's within me. And bless his holy name. Don't forget his benefits. He yeah. number one forgives our sins. Two, he heals all diseases. Three, mm. uh, he redeems our life from destruction, crowns us with tender mercy. Mm-hmm. But then I like this. This is another one. He renews our youth. Mm-hmm. So, amen. Keeps us nice and youthful and feeling young and good. We're good. Okay, I got a couple more. Rebecca. Uh, two and three says, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and, well, I'm going to go to two. The Lord said to me, said, write the vision, make it plain upon tables. Verse three, I'm back up two, three. Well, the vision is not yet for a point in time. And see, God's got a timing for all of us. Yeah. Our time yeah. is not necessarily God's time. Just like he had a point in time for Abraham and Sarah to have that baby. Even though they got a little impatient, tried to do it on their own, you know, bringing their maid in high guy. That's a whole different lesson. You know, but they, the time was appointed. Even in their old age, they had a baby. Elizabeth and Zacharias. You know, it, finally the, the angel came and said, the Lord has heard your prayer. They have been praying years and years and years and years and years for a baby. And so we have to trust the process of, of our life. And, and I like this this whole topic is, even though it seems like I'm making a comeback, it's just that it's a part of God's plan. So Habakkuk 2 and 3 says, for the vision is yet for a point in time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. We have that back to that Isaiah 40, 31, which... Dr. Octavia, you so beautifully dissected that we have to wait for the Lord. We can't, Lord, you know, like the guy that prayed for patience, Lord, oh, God, you're so wonderful. You're so beautiful. Lord, I want patience, please. Amen. And I want it right now. <laughs> you know, no, no, it's not like that. You got to wait on God. It's time. Amen. And so it says, go and carry, wait for it. And what do you do while you wait? You're going to be in a corner. I'll shut up in the house, mumbling and complaining. I know what's going to do. I know I should just went on out here, buck wild, and just be a heater. All right, all right. No, <laughs> while we're waiting, <laughs> what are we doing? We're praising God. We're loving Him. He's loving us. We're doing the work of the ministry. We're blessing our others' lives. We're sharing the goodness of the Lord. And while we're waiting for it, look, we'll look up. And wherever God has for us, I'm talking about the full destiny, the full level, we'll be there. Amen. And the thing is, uh, don't it tarry. That tarry means to wait. It said wait for it. Because right. it will surely. It didn't say, well, I don't know. I, I need to check. I, got, I may have an attitude. You may have been a naughty girl. I, I ain't nothing for you. No. 
<laughs> What's that guy's attitude? I'm, I'm a check. See my, my uh, blessing store. No, it says here because it will surely come and it will not carry. And I yes. want to end with this one Romans 8 28 to seal the deal. And we know that all things, so whatever any of us have gone through, you may be going through, or you might get be getting ready to go through, all things work together for the good. To who? To those who love God, those called according to his promise. Let me take this the time back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, you know, I can go some more, but take it back. Woo. Amen. Yeah, I think that once got everything all stirred up, yeah. Amen. That's all sound real good. Amen. I'm yeah. telling like it is. Both of you ladies, thank you so much. And I want to say hi to Irene Seabiz Washington. And I want to say a hi to the Wright family. And I want to say hello to my DH, Emily. Whoever else might be looking at me, giving you guys some, some good comments. Irene says, fight back. Amen. And yeah. Miss Margie. It says, and it works to our good. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I wanted to read. This is what um, a writer had said. And that's one. Okay, once again, on the combat. On the comeback. And that just sounded like a real nice little slogan phrase. It said, I'm on the comeback. You know what you say? I'm on the comeback. And, uh, you know, and then when you look at it, I have never left. Those that really know who God is and is holding on to God's unchanging hand, yeah, you you haven't gone went anywhere. This might look a little different for a minute, but you still holding on to God's unchanging hand, and and you know what looks like a comeback to everybody else is put like that. They're, oh, they on a comeback, and that's why we're going like I I I I've never been left. I never I was never gone. <laughs> it just looked like that to you. Well, you don't know. I've been holding on to God's and changing hand. It might look like a comeback, but it's you know God is taking me to the next level, next level in Jesus and next level in life. So God is good. God is good, and that's what that's a good message. I'm gonna read a little bit that I had um, heard the read that the writer was saying, which I guess he speaking for himself. We can speak for a lot of people. He said, "Do you like to wait for something?" And he said, "I certainly don't." When someone else causes the delay, it makes me even more impatient. It seems like we are all the time having to wait for something to take place in our lives. A doctor's appointment, waiting for the car to get repaired, waiting for the next meal, waiting for a raise on the job. You know, we may get impatient waiting for things, but we do it because we need what we are waiting on to happen. So as we go on and say, why is it that people give up on God when they need him to do something for them? We expect God to answer us right away. When he doesn't, we give up and look for someone or something else to meet the need. And the scripture tells us, uh, this is what both of you were saying. I remember Dr. Tavia Dr. Tavia said, you know, you just got to wait on the Lord, wait upon the Lord for it. And he, and, uh, will find their weight worth wow it's, it's in other words it's the hippie say it's worth the wait i waited and waited and waited it was worthwhile <laughs> and it's i that that isaiah again of course the day that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up on wings i love that love what you're saying that about what you all used to do with the eagle you used to watch the eagle spread his wings certain time of day come and yeah. fly across yeah. there yeah i mean the eagle is a powerful uh victorious royal uh creature the bible uses yes. they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint and who was that what did i say you might have to call was that you best darling you might get you may, might get tired you might feel like you're gonna crawl no that was you dr say you said i might not feel like doing it at all i don't know what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna sit down i'm just i'm tired i'm just not gonna do it i'm gonna give up I don't feel like running. I don't feel like walking. I don't even feel like crawling. I'm just going to lay here. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes life can come across like that, too. I'm really telling you. 
Sometimes something comes through there, and that's why we had to have our hands and guys and change his hand, unchange his hand. If we do, he he can he can bless us not to suffer that as, as much as we if we're on our own in our own mind. You know, we're stressing out within ourselves instead of just giving it to the Lord. Then it says when we ask God to intervene on our behalf, and y'all forgive me, I said the word shoot, and that's that could be a bad word for some people. Uh, so forgive me for somebody to think that's a bad word. Um, he starts on the answer right then. But the enemy of our souls wants us to think God doesn't care and doesn't want to answer us, so we will quit trusting and serving God. Now, that's pretty bad. God didn't come when you wanted, so you just going to, well, I'm not going to serve God no more. I'm not going to even trust God no more. He left me hanging right here with all this mess going on. I don't see God, you know, people. You can go all kind of ways with that. that. That's the enemy talking right there. That's almost kind of remind you with all that Job was going through. Job never Job. Now that's that's a major major situation Job was in. That many of us may not have been able to handle. That he didn't give up. People was telling him to curse God and die. His wife left him. Just every everything went. All his friends was that was there. They just they 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 said goodbye to. He lost everything that he had. But he kept holding on to God's unchanging hand. And look what happened. That's that That's that better than a comeback thing. You see what happened to him. God blessed him with so much more than he had in the beginning. Cause, because he never gave up. So we go a little further and we're going to say, But the prince of the kingdom of Golo, you cannot go wrong waiting on God to deliver the answer. It will be the right answer for you. And it will arrive just when you need it the most. Amen. Your faith in God will always produce the victory, and you need your life. The reason is because God loves you, and as a father of love for his children, will bring forth the right answer for your situation. So yes. there's a lot of times we Amen. have our own idea of what we think we're supposed to supposed to happen. And a lot of times it turns out it's a whole another something else. And, and it's good, though. It's like uh, Miss Margie said, it's for you, it's to you good. You know, it turns out to be to you good. Turn, matter of fact, it turns out to be better. And what we were thinking was a hog, you know, we was way off base, you know. Don't give up, but hold on to the unchanging hand of God. Don't let people hinder you with their unbelief and negative words. Right. Sometimes people will tell you, you, you might be really hanging in there, and then somebody walk up, I don't see how you going to make it. <laughs> We ain't tell you that, and all of a sudden, you speed know, off. You got to ask God to keep your spirit up. They're going to yeah, say, they go like, well, you did. Then some people are bold enough to say, you believe in God so much. Well, how come God didn't come here? I, where God at? You know, you don't have to even say that. Somebody else will come up and say it to you. And you still hold on to God's unchanging hand. Now, see, these are the kind of people you don't, <laughs> you don't need to be around. But that, that kind of conversation, can, it can just it can surface out of anywhere. Anybody can say it. And that goes to show you somebody watching. They are watching you. Mm-hmm. And you are a light anyway. You're a light. You guys right. shouted. You're the light. But they're watching uh-huh. you. And then they're going to be negative about it. See, now that's that's the enemy. The enemy will use anything that's not uh, related to God or, you know, the spirit's not in the right place. Or if right. they're just open, put it like that. Some people really may not even mean any harm when they say that. And some some people just really that's gonna tell you like it is, and their hearts like that, you know, to be negative and tell you, well, you're supposed to be such a Christian, you know, why are you going to? And so people have it wrong. They got it wrong because being a child of God that didn't mean that things would not come in our lives. It didn't mean that, but that means right. that God is gonna strengthen us. He fortifies us through that. He gives us strength. And I tell you, when you do come back, when you when it looks like come back, they're like, oh, you you made a comeback. Well, girl, no, I just never left. I've been here. Waiting on my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I've been here, like <laughs> like on, Pastor now. Darlene Come said. On. I've been here. I ain't never yeah. stopped praying. I've been here. Mm. I, I keep the faith. I've been trusting in the Lord. Oh, I've been here all the time waiting. I knew God was coming. i just been waiting. There's you over there looking at me, telling me I'm, it don't look good. <laughs> it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I know God. And boy, you got to be really rooted and grounded in the Lord because you don't... Um, they say, don't let people hinder you because you know they're speaking from the way they feel too but think about it that's how they feel they feel like wow you know 
they they're down they're looking at you down about it and i guess that's how what how they would say about themselves too you know so but the good thing is when they see you the lord bless you to sprout out sprite up spring forth what is that isaiah 58 he said gonna bless you to spring forth your health will spring forth he said even your nighttime is gonna be be like like the noonday that means there'll be no darkness in your life if you just trust in god then see there goes the testimony so whoever negative was looking around and saw that, and they see God take you, bring you up, take care of you, and matter of fact, you're on a whole nother level. So you've been working with this the whole time. And that's that's a testimony, and maybe it'll turn the light on for somebody else. Maybe next time I'll say, Why well, they they was waiting on the Lord, wasn't they? Look at that. I, I thought they weren't gonna make it. But look at them. Now they this, 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 and that. Look where they at now. I can't even catch them. They way up there. The Lord took them way up there. And that's what the Lord will do. God said He'll He'll He'll, he'll, he'll take you up before and and bless you, and like Pastor Darlene said, your youth He'll preserve you in your youth, you know. And folks be looking at you trying to figure out how how you get through all that looking come out looking good like you looking. You ain't never look bad. Mm, why she don't look bad? She all kind of stuff that been all up in there. They don't even look bad. They, if people don't know you, they will never know. <laughs> Because God got his hands on you, that's why. Because God is holding on to you, that's why. God is blessing you. He said he's going to cover you and hold you close to him. So the, these things won't be able to touch your soul. They won't be able to touch your spirit. And when you give God your heart and your mind, you won't be able to touch your heart and your mind either. So that's that's how you are buffered and covered by God. The angels, he said he gave, you, he gave his angels charge over you, keeping you all your ways. So we yeah. want to look like you're supposed to fall. The angels gonna say the angels gonna bury you up in their arms. So you won't even bunch your bump your foot on that stone and fall in the hole. Cause the angel got you. Guys, see that God is good. And so um it's then it says the word of God, let me see, where are we at? Ne okay, we don't need to listen to the negativity and unbelief of others, the people, but we need to tr trust the living word of God, and you will see the answer manifest itself before your very eyes. Not just before your very eyes, but before everybody else's very eyes. Especially the ones that was negative and unbelieving. <laughs> and it was going and some, yeah, this was, it's interesting how, and I hate to say this, but I'm going to tell you the truth. There are some that hang around and see if you're going to fall. Well, they want to see if you're going to fall and watch you fall. Watch you go through and see if you're going to fall down and get jacked up. And then... They gonna say I knew it, <laughs> but the guy won't allow it to happen. God will not allow it to happen, and they, you know, after a while, they might just go on about your way, fall by. That's what I said. Those that fall by the wayside, you, mm -hmm. you too busy. Some I, I heard this morning. It says, I don't know what scripture was that Hebrews. It said you need to tend to your own business, and so while God can take care of you. <laughs> And why you 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 messing with your neighbor, looking all up in your neighbor stuff, and you know, and and and, and, and looking for that stuff to get jacked up. And well, first, we shouldn't even have that. The Bible tells us not even have that kind of thing in our heart. We're not supposed to have that in our heart to to uh, look for something bad to happen or hope for something bad to happen. And then you know, you're supposed to glorify yourself with somebody else's pain. But the world is the world, folks, and that's is why we need Jesus. And God will take care of you in every way, from your emotions, your mind, your spirit, your soul, your body, and those things will be of non effect. And, and as you being God's child, that light shine, that little light gonna shine. <laughs> hey, Bear CJ, Bear, <laughs> with that light shine, that's what you are. You shine before this world. You're representing Jesus Christ, and all the enemy got to do is gonna just just flee away away because you can't do nothing with anything that belongs to God. It says through Christ Jesus I can do all things. So through Christ Jesus I can do all things. Wait, trust, and believe, and you will receive the reward of your faith. That's the reward of your faith. Yes, it is. Yes. So that's it, folks. That's that's making that's the comeback that that, that you never left in the first place. Hold on, guys, and change your hand. <laughs> amen, amen, yeah, taking it to a whole, whole, another, 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 another level. God is good. God is so good. So, thank you so much for that. Where you know, I'm listening to everybody, and I'm, I'm very much encouraged my own self by this, these conversations that we have. You know, 
and uh, turn. It's like the, the light gets brighter and brighter. God makes the light brighter and brighter in your life. So we just thank God for His Word. That, like on there it says, God's living Word. So I'm going to just ask Doctor um, Octavius or anything that she else she like to say. No, just Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we're going to ask Pastor Darlene to do the invitation to Christ. I know lately I've been I've been having this prayer list. And I'm I'm probably gonna get in trouble if I don't mention everybody's name, but I'm gonna try to do it anyway. <laughs> so we just ask some blessings and prayers for the Bell family, the Davis family, the Washington family, the Wright family, the Milburn family, the Smith family, the Harris family. The, uh, uh oh, there we go. <laughs> the Bradley family, we're talking about Jansen Bradley. Um, the Ford family, we're talking about Rick. We're looking at Miss Margie Edge family. Um, any other body else that's listening? I know there's a whole bunch of other folks I need to be mentioning. Also, someone that I was able to get in contact with contacted me today, Sister Twyla Jones family. And anybody else that can come out of your mind, your spirit, your body, your soul, uh, the Burright family. Look, see, I'm gonna get in trouble because it's a whole lot of people. Um, the Johnson family, and any and everybody else. God knows who we all all are. I'm just trying. But we just want to hold them all up. Our loved ones, our families, in prayer for the God's continuous blessings. Of the, we're gonna say this, this is a cover it all. The whole Facebook family. The LICMC family, and for the folks that's not even listening, and all their family, that'll cover everybody and everything. <laughs> Just to bless, bless us, continue to keep his arms around, protect us, keep his healing and wonderful saving power upon us, which he already has promised that for us. And we, we just ask God to keep us covered. In Jesus' name, for, for everything that we have, that we do, we just give it all back to the Lord. And ask God for His strong anointing power to just to stay upon us and keep us and bless us to continue to grow in Him. And I want to give it over to Pastor Darlene. Amen. Oh, I forgot Amen. to say that. I have to say the, the Riddle Taylor. The, all the families you call London, we touch and agree, they are covered. And the Riddle Taylor family. The Riddle Taylor family. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah. And we touch right now that they are covered with the blood of Jesus, the blood of the yes. living God. Yes. And God has be upon them and that he will bring every last one of these families through in the name of Jesus with holiness and healing and strength. And that God will work those that need miracles, work a miracle, that he'll do what he does best. And that is work miracles in jesus holy precious name today all the need will be met there be nothing missing nothing broken in the name of he's the mm -hmm. yeah. 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 yeah everything that needs putting back in jesus, jesus. Holy name. now uh we're going to offer everybody the most precious gift and that is you know, your decision, where are you going to spend eternity? There are only two choices. Don't believe any lies of the enemy. Well, you know, when you're dead, you're done. No, you are not. Your Ooh. spirit, your soul is going to live somewhere. Now, the body goes back to the dust, of course. But then the thing about it with eternal life, our bodies will be raised with just perfect bodies. You know, some... Some people say, well, you'll be in your pride. Well, say, hey, that sounds great, but our bodies will be glorified bodies. You are going to spend eternity either heaven, choice number one, that's door number one, mm. or door number two, like those game shows. No <laughs> door, no three doors. Door one, heaven. Oh, no. Door two, hell. Mm. <laughs> so what, what, what do you choose now? You know, the people in the, in the churches say, you get your party pass now. You make your decision. And it's the thing about it, nobody can make that decision for you. No. Nobody. When my mama, no, child, you got to make My grandma, no, mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And so we are offering to you Jesus. And you said, well, I mean, what do I have with Jesus? Look, 
child, you have everything. First of all, eternal life, because if the Bible says every knee is going to bow in front of him, every tongue is going to confess. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus Christ now is your Savior, just like the lifeguard. But there's going to come a time he's going to be your judge, and it'll be too late. Mm. So you have to accept him now. Yeah. And I don't know who this is for, because I usually don't even go into great details like this, but somebody you may be watching now or later, you don't know if you ever received Jesus Christ as your Lord and say, look, you can know right now. It's not enough. When I was on the usher board, that's great. I was in the quiet. That's wonderful. I shook the pastor's hand. That's good. But did have you ever asked Jesus Christ to come into your life, to be the Lord of your life, mm -hmm. director of your life, to, to save you, and, and let him know, Lord, you're the only way. So let's pray this little prayer. And it's a simple prayer. It only takes a couple of minutes or so. Yeah. And it's based on Romans 10, 9, that says, If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Well, you don't know what I did, pastors <laughs> and ministers. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. God is a God of inclusion. Mm -hmm. He loves everybody. Everybody. Come as you are. He will save you and he will he'll help you. So let's pray this prayer right now. Father, Father, Father in the name of Jesus. In the, in the name, name of, of Jesus, Jesus. I believe. I, I believe, believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That Jesus, that Christ, Jesus Christ is, is the, Son the Son of God. God. He died on the cross just for me. He died, he on, died the on the cross just, just for me. me. They put him in a grave. They put, they put him, him in a grave. grave. But he is no longer there. But he, but he is, is no longer, longer there. there. God raised him from the dead. God raised him from the dead. And he is alive right now. And he is alive right now. Dear Lord Jesus Christ. Dear Lord Jesus Christ. Come into my heart and into my life. Come, Come into my heart and, and into my life. Save me, Lord. Save, Save me, Lord. Lord. Forgive me. Forgive me. Of all my sins. Of all my sins. And my wrongdoings. And my wrongdoings. I'm so sorry, Lord. I'm, I'm so, so sorry, sorry, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. For washing away all my sins. For washing, washing away, away all, all my of my sins. sins. With the blood of Jesus. With, With the, the blood, blood of, of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord, Lord. For coming into my life right now. For, for coming into my, my life, life right, right now. now. And I ask you to be my Lord. I and ask I you, ask you to, to be my Lord. Lord. My Savior, my, my Savior, Savior, and the Director of my life, and the, and the director, director of my life. life, and according to your word, and according to your word, I'm right now born again. I'm, I'm right now, right now, born, born again. again. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. My name, My name is, is written, written in the Lamb's Book of Life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much yes. for that beautiful, beautiful invitation to Christ and everything that God has led you to do. Both of you ladies did a wonderful job again today. And I just want uh, you to know that Pastor Darlene will come on today at 7.30. Moments of Inspiration. And uh, later on, we have some other programming that will be coming on following that. Also, um, Dr. Artavia, God's willing, she'll be on, on, on tomorrow. God's willing, she'll be on at 8 o'clock on the radio as hey, well. Hey, yeah. And I have a new person that I met from. He contacted me. He's from 
somewhere, I think West Africa. His name is Coom Franklin. So I'm, I probably will be coming on probably about 6.30 or 7 or maybe uh, after uh, Pastor Esther Smith, maybe 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock uh, with a Facebook Live. Um, try to get him on Zoom so you can see who this guy is. He contacted us. He has a film ministry. And so we're going to do an interview with him. I'll come on live and get a chance to see his little short movie that he made. And hopefully we'll be collaborating with him. So we just thank God for, you know, God blessing us with this global uh, set that we be able to reach people from all over the world. And yeah. they're reaching us back. Amen. So Amen. that just lets us know that somebody's looking. Somebody's yeah. looking. Way over there, <laughs> like people say, way over yonder, <laughs> yeah. and right here. So, um, we're gonna ask Pastor uh, Darlene, will she tell us what else she has going on this evening? Though, amen. Well, first of all, London, I am so excited to be on another uh edition on your radio streaming show with Moments of Inspiration with Pastor Darlene Dow. And I'm looking forward to sharing tonight at 7.30. And then uh, tonight, um, probably around 9.45, I will be on with a five-minute praise break with Pastor Darby Bell. And it's just a, a little time we set aside. It may go a little over five minutes. It may be five minutes. Well, all we're doing is thanking God. Amen. We're praising Him. You know, some people like to put the praise in the chat box. I share them. Mm -hmm. We sing together, we rejoice, clap our hands, we magnify the Lord, yes. and I always say, bring your shopping shoes, hallelujah. Amen. But it's just a, what it is, it's a praise break. Yes. But we break away from everything, and we just focus on Jesus and thank Him for His goodness. So that'll be our Darlene Bell uh, Facebook page. Amen. And I also Amen. have if you don't catch it on the you on the Facebook, I have a YouTube page that is called Pastor Darling Bell. You can always catch the uh, praise breaks on there as well. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Amen. Thank yeah. you. Also, and then right after, right about after when she gets done, we're looking forward to hearing from Bishop Andre Sunny Woods at ten o'clock. So Thursday is kind of a nice full evening, oh, wow. and we have some new things popping up that we want to do. Uh, so we just thank God once again for your participation in at the table of prayer. So we are going to look forward to talking with you later. Don't forget to check out Pastor Darlene at seven thirty. Check out uh, our Dr. Octavia tomorrow in her ministry at eight o'clock. Okay, God bless you, ladies. You have a blessed day. I love you all. Love you, LICMC. Love you, Facebook. Love you, everybody. <laughs> God bless you, and I definitely love the Lord. So glad that the Lord loves me. Amen. I love me too. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Bye bye, everybody.